Hi, my name is Rudy and I'm presenting you today Meta, a system to automatically test network validation tools. This is joint work with my colleagues here at ETH Zurich, Tobias, Petar, Laurent and Martin. We are all too familiar with reports like these about network outages. Fortunately, network analysis and verification tools promise to make such outages a relic of the past. Because these tools, for example, Badfish or Minesweeper, allow network operators to check their configuration changes before deploying them to production. However, that only helps as long as these tools make no mistakes. As long as these tools don't say a configuration change is safe, even though it isn't. So to that end, the developers really have to strive to build as accurate tools as possible. Unfortunately, this is an extremely, extremely difficult, if not impossible, task. So to accurately capture a network's behavior, one not only has to consider all the different protocols and their features, but every vendor, device and or specific implementation of them. So it's easy to make a mistake to get something wrong. And we asked ourselves, how can we help operators avoid such mistakes? How can we help them build accurate network analysis tools that capture all the special behaviors of a specific network. And this is where Meta enters the scene. So Meta is a system to automatically test network analysis and verification tools, and it finds inaccuracies in their underlying network model. It does so by generating lots and lots of different configurations and supplying them to the tool that we want to test. At the same time, it also runs these configs in an oracle, which is basically a testbed running real router images. It then compares the outputs of the two tools and reports back any discrepancies it finds. And it does so continuously. As input, Meta takes a list of configuration features that we want to test and a topology that basically defines how the testbed looks like. It then generates lots of configurations and for every discrepancy it finds, it creates a report. And these reports include, first of all, the features that cause the discrepancy, and second of all, a minimal configuration example that allows the developer to reproduce this discrepancy. Now, the intuition is quite simple. Generate lots of configs, run them in the tool, compare it to the Oracle, and report any discrepancies. However, it's not that easy. So in the following, I will first talk about how we make sure that we actually generate configurations that make sense, that are useful for testing. And second, I will talk about how we can steer this configuration generation in a way such that we thoroughly cover the entire space of configurations. And finally, I will talk about how Meta actually performs in the wild. So let's get started with the config generation. As you all know, configurations have a clear structure. We can't just generate anything. So first of all, the generated configs need to be syntactically valid, which means they have to stick to the configuration syntax. Otherwise, the tools or devices cannot parse the configurations that we create. But that's not enough. We also need to make sure that these configurations are semantically valid, meaning they need to be consistent and coherent, so all that the resources that we use need to be properly defined. For example, we cannot apply a route map that doesn't exist. And second, these configurations need to allow for meaningful control plane computations. So when we have a BGP session, for example, the attributes need to match on both ends, such that the session eventually is brought up and is exchanging route messages. So to generate the syntactically and semantically valid configuration, Meta takes a two-stage approach. First, it kind of creates the base configuration by defining the interfaces, setting up routing processes and adjacencies, and defining some of the resources that we might use later, such as route maps. Once this groundwork is done, we start to activate different configuration features, like route redistribution, applying a route map to a BGP session, and so on. And finally, for every parameter of those features, we have to pick a value. So for the ins, we randomly choose some integer value. And for where we need a keyword, we choose some keyword. And like that, we generate our configurations. So now let's look at how we can steer the configuration generation 
to actually capture as many different diverse configs as possible. Unfortunately, the space of all possible configurations is huge. Just take one feature as an example, distance BGP. It has three 8-bit parameters, which leads to 16.5 million different options just for this one feature alone. But we don't look at features on its own, we look at them in combination. So to cope with this huge search space, we restrict it. So basically we cherry pick few representative configurations to cover the space thoroughly. And we do that using two techniques. First of all, a boundary value reduction, and second of all, combinatorial testing. So what we, what we do first is we limit the options that we consider per parameter. And here we rely on observation that similar parameter values should lead to similar behavior. So instead of testing every single value on its own, we just test a few representative values. And as the name says, we restrict every parameter to its boundary values, to the minimum, the maximum, and some value in between. This allows us to restrict the search space by orders of magnitude. And in addition, it also helps us to better test certain features, features that have a threshold. Because with the minimum value, the threshold is met, and with the maximum value, the threshold is not met. So now we first restricted the number of options per parameter, and we continue by restricting the, the combinations of features that we consider. Here we rely on an observation from the software engineering literature, which shows that bugs are mostly caused by a few interacting features, like one or two. So with combinatorial testing, we can define a testing strategy, so basically just a long list of tests that activates different features. Now it activates the features in a way such that we cover every pair of features at least once. An abstract view of it is kind of this collection of dots where every dot represents one feature, like setting a link weight or setting a metric. Now this collection of features serves as an input to the configuration generation and we test one test after another. And it's important to note that even though we test every pair at least once, we can test multiple pairs at the same time. Once we have run through all those tests, we know that we covered every pair at least once. So now we have seen the full pipeline of Meta. And finally, the remaining part is how Meta actually performs. And for this, we looked at two questions. Does Meta actually manage to find real bugs? And how do the different components contribute to Meta's effectiveness? So we have implemented Meta in Python and we have publicly released it on GitHub. Meta currently supports the most common protocols and features, both for Cisco iOS and Juniper configurations. And for the Oracle, we use the te uh, virtualized testbed, so we use GNS3, and we ran both Cisco and Juniper devices. To see whether we can actually find bugs, we tested three well-known tools, Batfish, CBGP, and NV. In all three tools, we found bugs, and most of the bugs were confirmed by the developers. It's quite interesting to see that most of the bugs that we found were silent bugs, meaning they didn't lead to a crash, but to a wrong result. These bugs are actually worse because it's hard for a user to notice that something is wrong. Finally, we look at the effectiveness of the different components of Meta. To this end, we look at the coverage that they achieve and the number of bugs that they find. And it's important to note that we look at feature coverage and not code coverage because the code coverage is really specific to the tool that we're testing. We ran 1800 tests roughly, and this is just the number of tests that is required to cover every pair of features that Meta currently supports. And each test took about two minutes, but we could speed that up by quite a bit actually. So as a first step, we looked at just when we generate syntactically valid configurations. They can be parsed, but make no sense at all. We found three bugs and the coverage was not that great. By adding semantic configuration generation on top, 
We couldn't increase the coverage really, but we found a lot more bugs, 13 additional bugs. And this is really due to the fact that with the semantic generation, we enforce meaningful control plane computations. With the boundary values, we can slightly increase the coverage and find additional bugs. Finally, with combinatorial testing, we find three more bugs because now we test every feature pair once. And we see that we achieve full coverage with combinatorial testing, but that's actually the case by definition. Now you might ask yourself, are we done? Have we found all the bugs there are? Unfortunately, that's not the case. With combinatorial testing, we can just guarantee that we cover the entire search space thoroughly. However, now you could continue testing and instead of considering only pairwise feature interactions, you could consider interactions of three, four, five features, or you could also consider more values per parameter. So combinatorial testing really allows us to strike a good balance between covering the space and running few tests. So all in all, we have to say that the semantic generation is the most important component of Meta. However, all the others still contribute their part to Meta's effectiveness. And with this, I'm at the end of my talk, of my talk about Meta, so a system to automatically test network analysis and verification tools. And it does so by generating syntactically and semantically valid configuration in a two-stage approach. We make sure to cover the search space systematically by using a boundary value reduction and combinatorial testing. And we report all the discrepancies, all the inaccuracies that we find back to the developer.